Have you ever seen a small fossil and wondered, is this a baby or just a small adult? How do scientists tell the difference? Turns out it's not super obvious. In fact, paleontologists have had some pretty big debates over what counts as juvenile versus full-grown adult in the fossil record. Some fossils we thought were whole new species turned out just to be babies of species we already knew. But don't worry, today we're diving into the fossil records specifically of dinosaurs to show you how geologists and paleontologists figure it out. And it turns out we can not only tell the difference between babies and adults in the rock record, but we've actually learned a lot about juvenile dinosaurs and even how they were raised all the way back in the Jurassic and Cretaceous periods over 66 million years ago. And if you've ever wondered what it would be like to raise a dinosaur from juvenile to apex predator, well, you're in luck. Because today's video is sponsored by Jurassic World Evolution 3, a brand new game where you get to build your own park, manage your dinosaurs from juvenile to adult, and even customize their environments. And look, I'm normally not a big gamer, but this game is so cool. And a big part of the reason I love it is because of how educational it is. And I'll tell you way more about it later in the video, but first, let's get into the science. In the fossil record, size can be super misleading. In fact, one of the biggest controversies was over a dinosaur called Nanotyrannus. For decades, some paleontologists thought it was just a mini cousin of T. rex, but newer studies say it's actually just a teenage T. rex. Same species, different life stage. So one tool we use to distinguish juveniles and adults in the fossil record is bone histology, the microscopic structure of bones. Fossil bones that are thin sectioned or cut into super thin slices can show growth rings, just like trees. These are called lines of arrested growth or lags. And juvenile bones often have few or no rings and lots of blood vessel canals, meaning that they were growing fast. Whereas adult bones show tighter rings, less vascularization and slower growth. Another clue is unfused bones. In many young dinosaurs, especially in the skull and limbs, the bones are still growing and haven't fused yet. For example, baby ceratopsians might have open skull sutures or loose joints, while adults are fully fused. So if a fossil has open growth plates or gaps in the skull, it was likely still growing. Juveniles also have different proportions. Just like human babies have big heads and tiny limbs, so did juvenile dinosaurs. They might have larger eye sockets, shorter snouts, more slender bones, and underdeveloped crests or horns. This is super important in paleo art that depicts these juvenile dinosaurs, and it's something that Jurassic World Evolution 3 has incorporated into their game design. In this game, juvenile dinos don't just look like mini adults, they have accurate juvenile proportions based on real fossil evidence. Now that's attention to detail and scientific data. Another great tool we use in interpreting not just the fossil record, but the rock record as a whole is context. When interpreting how rocks were deposited, it's often helpful to see what rock types lie above and beneath the layer in question. For example, if a layer of sandstone is next to layers of limestone or mudstone, it was probably an aquatic environment, like a beach. But if sandstone is next to more thick layers of sandstone, it was probably a desert where sand dunes were depositing. And we can use context clues like this to interpret fossils as well. If we find multiple baby dino fossils near their mom or near their nest with eggshells still preserved, it helps us determine their life stage. And if we're lucky, we may find what's called a growth series, multiple fossils of the same species at different life stages. Sites like Egg Mountain in Montana or the Yixian Formation in China have preserved dino babies, juveniles, and adults together thanks to rapid burial in volcanic ash or mud. And by comparing those, we can build a timeline of growth. And this is another data-backed aspect of raising dinos in this game. Okay, so we have plenty of tools that help us distinguish between adult and baby dino fossils. But this game also makes inferences about what juveniles ate, how they behaved, and how they interacted with their parents and other juveniles. So are they just guessing? Or do we actually have data that gives us clues about juvenile dinosaur behavior? Turns out we have data. 
For example, fossil teeth give us a lot of information about what juveniles versus adults ate. In theropods like T. rex, juveniles had thinner blade-like teeth, while adults had more robust bone-crushing teeth, suggesting that juveniles hunted smaller prey or even scavenged. Their jaw and muscle development also suggests that juveniles lacked the bite force to eat the same things as adults. We can also get data from coprolites, fossilized poop. It is rare, but when preserved, coprolites can give direct evidence of diet. There haven't been any confirmed juvenile-specific coprolites yet, but we continue to search for some. We can sometimes even find fossilized gut content, which is another indication of diet. Fossilized juvenile specimens with preserved stomach contents like fish scales and plant material have been found in rocks like the Ixian Formation in China or Two Medicine Formation in Montana. And another tool we use that is, again, not just helpful for the fossil record, but the entire rock record as a whole is modern analogs. Studying the closest living relatives of non-avian dinosaurs like avian dinosaurs, aka birds, and crocodiles suggests that juvenile dinosaurs occupy different ecological niches from adults in order to reduce competition. Fossil trackways also help us interpret juvenile versus adult dinosaur behavior. For example, sites like Dinosaur Ridge in Colorado and the Lark Quarry in Australia preserve dino tracks that show small dinosaurs moving in groups. Some even suggest play-like behavior based on the patterns. Also, based on evidence from bone histology, their fast-growing bone tissue indicates active metabolism and high energy. And this suggests that, much like modern birds and reptiles, juvenile dinosaurs were agile and exploratory, and their proportionally larger heads and eyes indicate heightened sensory perception and learning behavior. Also, based on leg proportions, it's been hypothesized that some juvenile theropods may have been more arboreal or fast-running than their adult forms, allowing them to hunt or evade predators differently. But what do we know about how juveniles interacted with their parents and other juveniles? Some extremely well-preserved fossils include nests with eggs, embryos, and juveniles alongside adults, which suggest post-hatching parental care. How cool is that? And modern analogs or closest living relatives like birds and crocodiles also show parental care, like nests, feeding, guarding, etc. So this strongly supports the idea that non-avian dinosaurs likely did the same. Some fossils also show groups of similarly aged juveniles buried together, or trackways of group juveniles like we talked about earlier, which indicates there may have been juvenile-only herds, which likely improved survival. So when you see juvenile dinosaurs together in Jurassic World 3, that's not just game design. That's backed by real fossil evidence from trackways to mass juvenile bone beds. But even though we've come a long way in our interpretations of the fossil record, there's still a lot we've gotten wrong. As bones grow, they change shape. Horns get bigger, skulls fuse, and proportions shift. And there's still a lot of ongoing research into not just juvenile dinosaurs, but the entire fossil record. And this work greatly helps us piece together biological evolution on Earth to understand where we came from and where we're going. So if this research sounds interesting to you, I highly recommend you look into it. Whether you want to explore for new fossils, reinterpret old fossils, or on the paleo art side of things, depict what these dinosaurs would have looked like in life to make scientifically accurate and educational media and games like Jurassic World Evolution 3 and all future iterations. Jurassic World Evolution 3 brings all of the science we've talked about today to life. You can raise dinosaurs from juveniles to adults and manage their needs along the way, from food to social groups to enclosure types. Juveniles have their own body proportions and behaviors. It's not just about park management, it's about understanding how these animals lived and grew. And for me as a geoscientist, that's what makes this game extra cool. It isn't just fun, it's also informed by real research. And if you want to explore the dino life cycle for yourself, check out Jurassic World Evolution 3. 
It'll be coming out this October 21st, 2025, but it is available now for pre-order here at this link on the screen, which I'll also put down below in the description box and pinned comment. Big thanks to Frontier for sponsoring this video and for making a game that celebrates both imagination and science. I hope you enjoyed learning a little bit about how we interpret the fossil record, and I hope you enjoy raising your own dinos in Jurassic World Evolution 3. Bye. Biological evolution. <laughs> hey, no. Hi. You want to be in the video? Yeah? <laughs> You're a good girl.